In this last lesson in Unit 9, we're going to finish up 9.5 discussing the discriminant. And that might sound fancy, but you're going to see it's something you already used, and it's a pretty simple concept. Um, we already learned about the quadratic formula. It looks like this, and we know that using the quadratic formula, we can solve any quadratic uh, for its solutions. If it has them, this will find it. But the reality is there are a lot of times where we might not need to know exactly what the solutions are. We just need to know if a quadratic has any solutions. Um, there's a lot of situations um, that, I, that I could you know, give you as an example where we don't necessarily need to know where exactly does it intersect the x-axis or what are the exact solutions, but just does it have any? Does it have any solutions? Does it have one or two solutions? And when that is the case, we can use the discriminant, which is just the section right in here inside of the radical. That's called the discriminant. And it decides how many solutions this has because, and we're well aware of this already, we already know what the rules are for when we take the square root of a value. We know that if this value here is greater than zero, a positive number, and we take the square root of that, it will have two solutions. Um, if it's exactly zero, then the square root of zero will be zero and only zero, and that will be the only solution. And if we end up with a negative here, we saw that yesterday or in our previous lesson, we know that we cannot take the square root of a negative and get a real number, so that would have no solutions. So in situations where we don't need to know the exact solutions, we don't need to use a whole equation, we can just evaluate this discriminant and decide based on that how many solutions it has. So the expression under the radical sign, this b squared minus 4ac, is called the discriminant, and the value of it determines the number of real solutions. So just as a review here, essentially, interpreting the discriminant means that if we just work on that b squared minus 4ac and we solve for that, if it is greater than zero, which basically means it's a positive number, then our quadratic is going to have two real solutions, or if we graphed it, it'll have uh, two x-intercepts. So if it's positive, then it's going to have two solutions or two x-intercepts. If it's exactly zero, then it has only one solution or one x-intercept. And if it's less than zero, or in other words, a negative, then there are no real solutions or no x-intercepts. That's when our parabola sort of hovers above or below but never reaches that x-axis when we graph it. So if they say determine the number of solutions and it's not saying solve the equation or find the solutions, we just want to know the number of real solutions, then we do not have to use the entire uh, quadratic formula. All we have to do is we'll still set up the, the same groundwork as before. We'll number one, make sure that the equation is set equal to zero. Then number two, we will still identify what A is what B is and what C is, so identify those. And then we'll just put those straight into that discriminant piece and you don't need the entire equation. So let's try that with number one. Make sure it's equal to zero, so that number part, that first part is check. Then let's identify what is our A value, our B value, and our C value here. In this case, A is negative one. It's a negative one there. Uh, B is six and C is three. And since we do not need to solve this, we just wanna know how many solutions it has, then all we have to do is plug it into that B squared minus 4AC. So in this case, that is six squared minus four times that A value of negative one and that C value of three. And then we just evaluate that and see what we get. And you can do that by hand, like I'm doing now, or you can throw it in the calculator. Uh, minus a uh, 4 times a negative 1 is a negative 4, and then that's going to be a negative 12. So minus a negative becomes a plus 12 here, so that results in a 48. That's greater than 0, right? That's greater than 0. It's a positive number. If we were to take the square root of 48, we would get two solutions. So this has two real solutions. Let's try the next one. This would be our final answer, by the way, not 48. If they want to know how many solutions it has, then we use a discriminant to make the decision. 48 is not our answer. Our answer is that that quadratic has two real solutions. 
Let's try this one. Is it equal to zero? Yep, check. That's a little check. <laughs> Identify what A, B, and C are. In this case, A is one, B is six, and C is nine. And then we just have to use the discriminant. We don't need the whole equation. So that means we're gonna do that B value squared minus four times our A and times that nine, that is our C value. And then six squared is 36 minus four times one, which is four, and four times nine, which is 36 again. And when we do 36 minus 36, we get zero. So what happens when the discriminant is equal to zero? Well, when a discriminant is equal to zero, then it has exactly one. That's not the answer. That is just telling me how many solutions it has. So this has one real solution. Okay. So be careful with that. The discriminant is very handy to determine how many solutions it might have. It does not tell you what the solutions are. So don't think that, oh yeah, the answer is zero or the solution is zero, it is not. Um, that's just a discriminant value, which tells you that it only has one solution. If they did wanna know, okay, well, what is that solution? Then you would need to use the entire quadratic formula in order to be able to uh, finalize that answer. Okay, let's try one more here. And in this case, again, it's already equal to zero. Let's identify our A value here is gonna be that one in front of X squared. B is going to be the 3, and then C is going to be that 8. And then we put that into the discriminant to see how many solutions. So in this case, that'd be 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times 8. And then 3 squared is 9 minus 4 times 1, which is still 4, and then 8, which is 32. And then 9 minus 32, that is a negative 23. Now, we know that when our discriminant is a negative number, that's when we have no real solutions because that discriminant really lives under the radical and we can't take the, negative, the square root of a negative. So if it ended up being a negative here and then we tried to take that square root, we would get that error message. So this is no real solutions since it's a negative number. Okay, and if you have a problem, we flip this over, that instead asks, find the number of x-intercepts, guess what? It is exactly the same thing, because we already know that the number of real solutions, sorry, the number of real solutions is the number of intercepts on your graph. And so if it, the directions say find the number of real solutions, or if the directions say find the number of x-intercepts of your graph, they're asking you for exactly the same information, because the x-intercepts are the solutions. Okay, so let's try one more. On this one, they wanna know um, how many x-intercepts, not necessarily what they are. So again, we would essentially set this equal to zero. We would identify the a value here, which is negative one, the b value, which is four, and the c value, which is three. And we would just have to put that into the discriminant. So we'll try that one more time. And then we'll say, okay, b is four, so four squared minus four times our a value and times our c value. This is 16 minus four times negative one is negative four, and then negative four times three is negative 12, minus a negative becomes a positive 12, so this comes out to 28. This here has two real solutions. And you could also evaluate that. I mean, these are simple enough, but if you're gonna use your calculator to do this, just always make sure you hug your inputs in parentheses. So you enter a parentheses around the four when you square it, minus four parentheses, negative one, and then the three, and it'll always give you the right number there as long as you enter everything in parentheses on your input. So you get the idea here. This next section is really just reviewing. So it's just solving the equation by any method, getting a, um, a little bit more practice with just a quadratic being given to you and you choosing what method. So we're gonna skip that on the lesson video and um, probably work a few of those two classes or warm up. Let's take a look at number 10, which goes back to this whole concept of uh, two solutions, one solution or no solutions, right? It says give a value of C 
which makes the equation that is given here have two solutions, one solution or no solution. So let's see how we would do that. So this is the equation we're working off of and we want to find a C value that would make this true. Okay, now just to recap, remember if we look back, we know that we'll guarantee ourselves two real solutions as long as that discriminant is greater than zero. What we want to do here is say, if we want two solutions, then we want the discriminant for this particular problem to be greater than zero. Now we know what A is. A is one here. Since it's equal to zero, we can go ahead and um, uh, identify A, B, and C. So A is one, B is negative two, and C is what we are trying to find. That's our question mark. So let's go ahead and fill in what we do know. We know that the B value needs to be a negative two here, minus four times that A, that is one, and then our missing C value. But we do know with this, we do know this quantity needs to be greater than zero if we're gonna guarantee ourselves two solutions. So all we do is essentially simplify this out and solve the inequality for C. So negative two squared is gonna be a positive four here, minus, and then four times one is still four, so we have that four times C, that's our unknown. We want that quantity to be greater than zero, and now we just solve for C. This is actually a nice little review over the inequalities that we did in the fall. So we'll use the same inverse operations that we do to solve equations to solve this inequality. So we'll start by moving this four to the other side with the opposite sign. This comes down, now I have a negative four C is still greater than, and then zero minus four is negative four. And then we get rid of this coefficient by dividing by it, so we divide by a negative four on both sides. Now, if you recall, this is one of the places where inequalities are a little different, so I hope this is like sounding a little alarm in your head and you're like going ding, 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 ding. Oh, if I divide by a negative, I have to flip that sign, right? We gotta flip that inequality in the other direction. So because we divided by the negative, we flip that inequality, and then negative four divided by negative four is one. So what values of C here would make this have two solutions? Any C value less than one, okay? So as long as C is less than one, that would guarantee that that quadratic up there has two solutions. So based on the same concept, right? If we wanted to have one solution, then what would be our goal? Well, for a one solution, our goal would be for it to be exactly equal to zero. So we would essentially play this game again and we would just say, okay, if I wanted to have exactly one solution, then I would want the discriminant to equal exactly zero. Instead of be greater than zero, we would want it to be exactly zero. And then you could just go through the steps again, although you're gonna start to feel like deja vu here, and rightly so because it's the same numbers. So we end up with a four, and then four times one is still four C. And then we move this guy, so you can start to see that the uh, numbers are the same. And why they're the same. And so then here we divide, of course, this is an inequality, I mean an equation, so we don't have to flip anything. So if C is exactly one. So if C is less than one, then it's gonna have two solutions. If C is exactly one, then it's gonna have only one solution. And I bet you, you know what's gonna happen next. Our work would be exactly the same, except we would want the discriminant to be less than zero if we wanted to have no solutions. Well, if you kind of follow this pattern, the work you know, would look exactly the same, but we know probably the result is gonna be is if C is greater than one. So if it's less than one, we have two solutions. If it's exactly one, it'll have one solution. And if it is, um, and if it is greater than one, then it will have no solutions. There you go. That's kind of the, the pattern there for the discriminant. So the discriminant's very helpful if you do not need to know the exact solutions, just how many.